Okay, here we go. Bop, bop, bop. Hey, welcome to the Electron X Lab. In this video, we're going to look at the maximum power transfer theorem, which basically is the theorem that explains what the load resistor needs to be so that the maximum volt, the maximum power from the source can be delivered to the load. Now, to get a kind of intuitive understanding of, of where that value needs to fall, let's give you a hint, it's somewhere between zero and infinity. We can look at the case where that load resistor is zero. So if that load resistor is zero, that becomes a short. And if you have a short, there's going to be no voltage across it. There's going to be no power dissipated by it. So the power dissipated by the load in that case is also going to go to zero. Now, if the resistance gets bigger and bigger and bigger, approaching infinity, then that basically becomes an open and you have no current going through the load. So again, the power to the load is zero. So what the maximum power transfer theorem shows is the value for that load resistor where the power is the maximum. So you can, I mean, you can see that if the load resistor starts getting, starting, starts increasing from zero, then there's going to be some voltage drop across it and there's going to be power dissipated by it. And same thing if you're going from an open and you start decreasing the load or you add a, add, add a resistor there and start decreasing that resistance, then again, there's going to be current going through it, so therefore there's going to be power dissipated by it. But what is the value of the resistance that's going to give us the maximum power? Well, to start off with, we should look at the equation for power. There's, there's, this can come in several different forms, but let's look at the voltage form. So the voltage across the load squared divided by the load resistance. Now we can then now express the voltage across the load in terms of the components that we have in this circuit. So you can just use a simple voltage divider to figure out what the voltage across the load is going to be in terms of the source voltage and the two resistances. And that's going to be RL over RL plus RS. And then this whole thing is squared. That voltage is squared. And then we divide by RL for that term. Now we can, uh, we can expand this out or make it in a slightly simpler form because these two RLs are going to cancel. We can move this RL plus RS to the bottom. So we get Vs RL, that's Vs squared RL over RL plus RS, and then that's all squared. And I can expand this out. Since I'm running out of room on my screen, I'm just going to rewrite it here. So RL plus RS squared will give me RL squared plus 2RLRS plus RS squared. And now I've got the numerator and the denominator. And, and what we want to do is figure out what is the maximum value that, that, R, that this equation can be. Vs is a constant, that's the source voltage. RS is a constant, that's the output resistance of the, of the source. RL is the only variable in this equation. And we have an equation, and if you remember back to calculus, if you take the first derivative of the equation and then set that value to zero, that will give you a maximum or a minimum value. And I can tell you at this point that when we do that, it's going to give us a maximum value. So if we do, basically what we want to do is find the derivative of that re equation with respect to RL, and we want that to be zero. Now let's look at this equation. Well, it looks like we have... Um, well, we have a ratio. We have a quotient. We can use the quotient rule to, to uh, find the derivative of this. And remember, the quotient rule is if you have um, an equation derived with respect to x of some function f of x over g of x, so basically a ratio, and here we have that ratio, rl is in the numerator and rl is in the denominator, then you can, you can determine the first derivative of that by taking the derivative of f times g minus the derivative of g times f over g squared. So in this case, my f is the numerator, actually in always, the f is the numerator and the g is the denominator. And so my derivative of the power with respect to resistance will be f prime g, so the derivative of this, so f prime, will give me, well remember the vs is a constant, doing the derivative with respect to rl, 
So I'll just have that constant times g. minus g prime, so derivative of this with respect to RL will give me 2RL plus 2RS, and that's just a constant, so that won't be included. And then this all gets multiplied by the numerator, Vs squared RL. Don't worry, this simplifies pretty quickly all divided by g squared. So I'm going to put this back into its original form of rl plus rs squared. So that was the original g, or the original denominator, and that gets squared. Well, we wanted this to be 0. So in order for this to be 0, it's only the numerator that needs to be 0. So we can actually ignore what's on, what's on the denominator here. So Basically, what I want to do is set this to 0 and then solve for RL. So I'm going to rewrite the numerator and, and um, rearrange things a little bit. So I've got Vs squared times RL squared plus 2RLRS plus RS squared minus, I'm going to bring this Vs squared to the front. Um, and then distribute this RL in, in through, the, through this part of the equation. So and then I get 2RL squared plus 2RL RS. And that, when that's 0, then I found the, the maximum. So now I want to find, I want to solve for RL. Uh, one thing I can notice, if I divide both sides of the equations by Vs squared, then these terms go away because they're constants that are in both of the terms, or both of these, these terms. And now I can write these out, this out without the brackets, and we'll see that a lot of stuff goes away. RL squared plus 2RLRS plus RS squared minus 2RL squared minus 2RLRS equals 0. Look, I've got a 2RLRS and a minus 2RLRS, so those two go away. And then I've got an RL squared minus 2RL squared, so I end up with just a minus RL squared. So I've got RS squared minus 2RL squared equals 0. Well, let's go back, let's go over here, and that shouldn't be 2. That should just be 1. So really what I have is R S squared equals R L squared. They're not going to be negative numbers, so I can just take the positive square roots. And I will have the maximum power when R S equals R L. And that's what the maximum power transfer theorem says, is when the load resistance matches the output resistance of the source, then you're going to have maximum power transferred to R L. And you can play around with it. You can take a, an example, put real numbers in here, set RL to the value of RS, calculate the power, and then drop RL by a tiny bit and increase RL by a tiny bit and calculate power. And you'll note that both of those values are just less than the power when RL is equal to RS. So that was just a quick video to show you where the maximum power transfer theorem comes from um, with a little bit of a proof using some calculus to, to show you why it's actually true. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Oh, I should have just stopped it.